Hey everybody, I have a really neat action cam review today. I'm really excited about this because I own the Firefly 7S and I absolutely love the action cam so I was really excited to get my hands on the new Firefly 8S. This is a vast improvement over the 7S and the 7S is a great action cam. But it also is more expensive because it uses better uh, components. Um, we'll go ahead and go over some of that right now. Now this is a 90 degree field of view version, so it's, there's no fish eye on this one. But it doesn't obviously going to get as much in its, into the field of view. So I'm going to see how it goes. I'm really I'm hopeful that I can use this for my uh, flight and driver views because uh, it has external mic hookup, which um, we'll discuss here a little bit later. Um, but we'll go over and look at the specs on the back here. It uses the, um, the uh, A12, um, A12S75, that is the Umbrella uh, processor, uh, image processor, and that is a really good. These are the Umbrellas are top of the line. Um, that's what all the high end, like the uh, GoPros and the Ecamm 4K, use the uh, Umbrella chips in them. Um, that's better than the Novatech, which was used in the Firefly 7 and Firefly 6. It also uses a IMX117 Sony image CMOS sensor um, and with wide dynamic range, and it has super view, which we'll also discuss. So really good um, CMOS sensor, really good image processor, and that combination is what allows this cam to do uh, 4K at 30 frames per second. It's not interpolated, it's not fake, it's real 4K, and that's what, one of the reasons why I'm really excited about this cam, this action cam. It does uh, photos here, it says 16 megapixel, but the sensor is only 12, so uh, you know, 12 megapixel is the highest level you're gonna get for your photos. Those other ones are probably uh, sort of fake photo or resolution as far as I know. You can see the video resolutions here. Uh, the 4K at 30 frames per second. And it's got these super views, which the super view is like a 4x3 that's stretched out. It uses, I think, the max um, field of view of the sensor. So it's like something you, I think, believe you use on a racer or something where you want to get a really wide field of view for uh, um, using on a racer or something like that. But uh, I'm not going to be using the super view for this stuff. Uh, there's 2.5K at uh, 60 frames per second, which is really nice because like the 7S only did uh, 60 frames per second at 1080p. It also, there's, there's a lot of resolutions it does not mention. There's a 2.7K, a little bit higher than a 2.5. It does that at 30 frames per second also. It's not listed here. But it does 1080p at 120 frames per second. That is awesome. So you're gonna get really smooth video playback so this would be really ideal on a racer, something that's really fast on an RC car. But uh, I don't know if YouTube even supports 120 frames a second. I'm not, that I can't say, I've never uploaded it, but uh, we'll put in some sample footage in this review. Um, but I'm gonna be, since I'm filming this in 60 frames per second, it'll be 60 frames per second in the sample footage at 1080p. But I will link to raw samples of some of the other resolutions and especially the 4K and that'll be in the video description so make sure you check that out to check out some of the sample uh, footage of the other, other resolutions so that you can see the true quality of course YouTube is going to you know downgrade it a little bit in terms of quality but it'll give you a much better idea than this review. He used the HD.264 uh, video format which is pretty common um, but like on a Roku TV like mine uh, the 4K video needs to be H.265, so you got to convert it just to play it on my TV, which kind of stinks. Um, but that's just my TV. You know, MPEG, uh, MP4 is the container for the video. JPEG, of course, is your uh, uh, image uh, format. It uses a 1200 milliamp, slightly higher voltage um, lithium ion battery, like a lithium ion high voltage, and we'll look at that in a moment too. Micro SD cards up to 128 gigabytes, and you want to make sure you get a high speed one, especially if you're going to be filming like in 4K. And it's got your other stuff here. It's got Bluetooth, which is cool for using a Bluetooth remote to start it and stop it. Um, HDMI, uh, mini HDMI output, USB 2. So, you know, see on the side here, it's got the Wi Fi, so you can use it with an app, and the app is fully functional. It's not just a preview app. 
Bluetooth and a video stabilization, external microphone, which I love. I bought an external mic to use with this on the USB port. So let's go ahead and we'll look at the camera and then we'll go over and look at some of the accessories and stuff. So I'm just gonna pop it out of the uh, waterproof case that it comes in here. And you can see here, this is really, really nice. It's got the two inch screen on the back. It does like it said, it uses um, the USB for the mic, but this is USB, uh, mini USB, like the GoPros use. This is not micro. So like my FPV cables um, on my like drones, I just happen to have uh, the micros, so I would have to uh, convert it or uh, get a different cable, but uh, that's not a big deal. Um, get your HDMI there. It's got a little hole here on the side if you want to put like a uh, wristband thing or there's an accessory I'll show you in a minute that lets you tie it around your, uh, attach it I believe and tie it around your neck. Um, it also comes with a uh, tripod mount screw hole which the 7S does not have. That's cool. So you can just attach it right to it. I've got a little uh, action cam tripod also and I can just attach it and not have to worry about putting it into a bracket to attach it. And it's got your uh, arrow keys here. It's got another arrow key here we'll look at. Your micro SD card goes right in here behind the, in the back next to the screen. It does not go on the side like the 7S. It's got your recording shutter button on the top and your modes here to switch around. And this little silver thing here, this is actually a selfie mirror. The 7S of course had that little screen, which that was nice to have because you're going to, uh, you know, when you're on a drone or something, you can see what it's doing. Or if I'm recording, I can ask Corey, who helps me out a lot, hey, is this recording? Obviously, um, it's nice to have. I don't recall offhand if this, I know that this lights up blue, the Firefly 8S, but I don't know, I can't remember if it flashes or not when it records. So I don't remember that offhand. But, you know, the lack of the front screen may be a cost-cutting measure by Hawkeye to, uh, bring the price down on it but the little selfie mirror is kind of cool you can see yourself in there and that's what they put in place of it the lens protrudes out are certain the you know the whole lens and the this protrudes out farther than the 7s but it has a little bit more of a lip around to protect the lens i so said this is just a 90 degree field of view so it has really nice video and really nice photos um, let's go ahead and we'll look over the uh, the accessories and then we'll come back and look at some of the menus on the camera so it comes, you know, packaged really nicely in this box. And you just pull this, you know, this is where the camera obviously was. I'm not usually one that does a whole lot of unboxing stuff, but I, and the action cams is a little bit different. I'm not gonna go through all the stuff it comes with. It comes with some stickers here and a cleaning cloth. And it comes with all the accessories, the, all the action cams, except for a few, you know. The e-cams don't come with any accessories. But it comes with everything. I don't think we need to go over everything here because it's the same one you get on a $30 action cam as you would get on maybe a $200 action cam. But there is one accessory in here and I'm gonna to try to find it. It's this one right here. This one allows you to uh, put this around your neck and then it has this little strap that you put in the corner of the action cam and it has this quick release. You pull this off and there you go. You can uh, attach, quick attach and quick unattach the action cam. So I do like this. This is not, I've never seen this in a uh, action cam accessories before. Um, some people have gotten a, uh, like a little um, anti-glare extension thing on here to keep the glare down um, with theirs. I've dug through my accessories and do not see it. So I don't know if that's just something that, from the people who got it from Hawkeye I did not get mine from Hawkeye or what or not. I'm not exactly sure on that, but I don't have that. But that's going to be a very cheap accessory to be able to find. Um, so I'm sure they may just have an add-on thing to buy. So that's all the accessories with it. Like I said, it's going to be all the ones you've seen before. There's no reason to go over all that stuff. So let's go ahead and we'll go over the uh, the camera itself. So we'll go ahead and turn it on. You turn it on here in the front. See it lights up blue. Uh, really nice the way the LEDs. And you can control these. I think you can turn these all off in the menu. And a really nice, vivid, 
And I say vivid because it's, it's bright and it's very clear with a lot of detail on this two inch LCD screen. Uh, hopefully this will stuff will show up. Sometimes the camcorders have trouble picking up these screens. So if you don't uh, see this in the video well at times, I will read it to you. Uh, but right now it is in, uh, I believe it's in 4K. Yeah, and the screen is just set to go off. Uh, that's just a timer issue. You can see the other things, a microphone over here, SD card symbol down on the bottom. And like I said, the resolution, so it's in video mode. So we'll go ahead and we'll look at some of the menu stuff. So the, like I said, there's the video mode there and then you press the mode button on the front, it switches you over to photos and then you click it again and it switches back to uh, your video. To get into the menus, you use these side buttons. I think if you press it forward, it turns the screen off and you press it again, it turns it on. Press the back button here and then that's gonna take you in. You get your settings, your video, um, time-lapse, playback, um, car mode for like car uh, dash cam and you can do your slow motion since it has such a high frame per second you can do an auto record in slow motion. Let's go ahead and now we'll enter into the settings. You do that by pressing the shutter button. You get your video resolutions there and we'll go ahead and go through some of those. So you get 4K at 30 frames per second, your 4K super views and 4x3 different stuff at 30 and 2.7 4.3, Super View 2.7, there's a 16 by 9 widescreen um, 2.7, and a 2.5 at 60. This is probably the one I'll be using for a lot of my reviews because I like the 60 frames per second, you won't get the stuttery effect. And it's higher uh, resolution than my 1080, so even if I downscale it, it's gonna look better in my videos than 1080p. Definitely a better color. Then you can do you know, 30 frames a second at 1440 at 60. This has a whole bunch of resolutions. There is your uh, 1080p at 120 frames per second. There. Hopefully that's showing up. I can't tell too much in my camcorder. But that's going to be a cool one to also test. So I'm just going to go ahead and back out of that. Let's see here. Hit the mode button on the front. There you go. Video quality. Sets fine, normal, you know, how high the bit rate is to the, to the video card. Your field of view, I have it on the wide, so that's using a full 90 degree and the standard resolutions, you know, medium and narrow. So, you know, you want it on the widest with the 90 degree, it's still going to be flat, uh, level and not fisheye. Auto low light, um, your gyro, which the gyro stabilization only works on some of the lower resolutions. It can't gyro stabilize 4K or anything because it's just so many pixels and such a high resolution the processor can't handle that it does it at 1080 and i think it may do it at 2.5 motion detection turn on dual files but i think makes a secondary file that can be read by like a, either the app or maybe a smartphone i'm not exactly sure on that video stamp for the date time lapse video loop record your microphone volume so especially like if you uh, i think it'll affect your external mic also if you feel like it's too high Sharpness settings, auto white balance, your exposure values, which I always wish the EVs were easier to access because there's times when it's really sunny, you're gonna wanna lower it. And in all these cameras, you gotta go into the menu and do that. I wish it had a shortcut because EV is one of the more important uh, settings. Same with ISO, but not as much as EV. And metering, which is a new one here on the on the camera. We back, we back out of that and go to the uh, photo mode. Then you'll also get the uh, settings. There we go. So when you get into the photos, you go to the photo size, you know, it's got uh, the different more resolutions. I try to, I go in with 8.3 megapixel, so I get a 16.9 widescreen. I like the widescreen better, you know, it's a lower uh, megapixel. Um, so let's go back. Photo quality, long exposure. You can do a very long exposure, like you want to put this on a tripod and take an exposure of the sky or something, especially at night and get stars. You could do something like that. Um, so you can do the very long exposure. If you go into that, you can do up uh, 30 seconds or a minute, I think. Yeah, oh, it's got a whole bunch of more, 10, five. I looked at this the other day. You can do 1 30th of a second. So you can do a really, really, really short exposure actually too. Your photo stamp, 
um, timer, photo burst, time lapse, photo sharpness, auto outbound, you know, all the still all the same ones. Now to get to the secondary menu here, use this little button here, and this takes you over here. And then you've got some extra settings, which it gives you on these like quick capture, um, delay off or not, um, TV mode, the light frequency, on-screen display, the brightness of the screen, auto shutdown time, screen off time, um, you know, battery saving features. The status LEDs, beeping sound, time stamp, date format, which I've already changed. The Bluetooth pairing to pair up with a Bluetooth remote. And then some of the stuff for the Wi-Fi, and it tells you the Wi-Fi, um, you know, what Wi-Fi SSID to look for. Um, and then to get back of that, you gotta go over to return and then press, I think, there you go, to get out of it. A little confusing how to get out of the Wi-Fi menu. The Wi-Fi password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's what you gotta get to, to uh, you can actually change that in the phone too. And it's got like the uh, firmware version and stuff. I think there's a beta firmware out now. Um, I don't know if there's an official firmware out from Hawkeye, but Hawkeye is very good. They update their firmwares a lot. So if there's any issues, they will fix it. They're a real company, they're a good company. They're not just some cheap uh, action can clone company. So really cool, has a lot, like I said, a lot of features with this. Like this camera a lot so far. So um, let's go ahead and we'll look at, let's compare this to, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. Let's go ahead and we'll put it side by side against the 7S so you can kind of see a little comparison right there. So I went ahead and grabbed my other action cams here, a few other ones, I got the 7S here, and here's the 8S. As you can see, the 8S is, you know, the whole lens and all this protrudes farther out. But otherwise, the cameras are really similar. Um, side by side here, you can see they're uh, same form factor, same size. Um, just slight differences, like I said, with the lack of the front screen like the 7S has with the selfie mirror. Here's the rear screens of both of them, 7S is over here, 8S here with the memory card next to it. Let's go ahead and turn both of them back on here. And uh, maybe we can see a slight difference. I don't know how this will show up on my camcorder, but uh, the 8S here, has a better screen. You know the same size. One reason you can turn the brightness up on the 8S, but it's more clear when I'm looking at stuff, I just get just more clarity, I can see better detail. So this is gonna be nice for when you're looking at what you're filming, or if you're doing your video playback, I just wanna get a preview, you can have a little better video playback on it. So overall a nicer, uh, it's obviously a nicer cam, but it's obviously about twice as much also. Let's go ahead and weigh them here now. The uh, 8S weighs 77 grams with the battery inside. I haven't need to show you the battery, so I haven't showed you that. And the uh, 7S weighs 64 grams. So the 8S is a heavier camera, and different components inside, and of course I think it had you know, a little different battery. And I also grabbed my Yi cam. I'm not gonna really compare the size too quickly on it. The Yi's, you know, similar but it's uh, a bigger camera here than the uh the eight than the 8s but the Yi cam weighs uh 71 grams so the 8s is the heaviest it's around 75 or so scale changes every time i think i put it on it's not the most accurate scale i have but 8s is heaviest and of course the 7s is the lightest so well look that's pretty much covers the weight on all those just to give you an idea but these things are all so light that really it's only going to be relevant if you are uh, using these in a uh, on a drone on a drone obviously every gram counts so the 8s is a little bit heavier but the trade-off may be well worth it considering that you can do 4k the uh, battery in it here i said i was going to mention that earlier i want to make sure that i discuss it is this uh, 3.85 volt, 1200 milliamp. So this is, like I said, and this is, it looks like a nicer battery. They're about $5. I'm um, having another one shipped to me. So I have a spare. 
and uh, just a little bit better battery, I think, and definitely more volts, you know, higher than the uh, 7S. The 7S will look here, and I, they're all compatible on these cheaper action cams. 7S, I may not even have the original one in it, but the 7S is a uh, 3.7 volts, a lower voltage. This is only, this is a 1,050, so this is the, the original one. Some of them use 900, there's different um, milliamps, so you should get a better uh, usage time out of the 8S's battery. Better battery, bigger capacity, so you can get a longer time of using it. It, you, it comes with this uh, QR code uh, card to scan for uh, the Android or iOS. You get this directly from Hawkeye, I believe. So once you get the Wi-Fi turned on, you'll see a little signal meter here for your Wi-Fi. Well, it's not a signal meter, but it's showing the Wi-Fi is on. And uh, you do have to turn that on every time, but uh, you do turn it on every time, which isn't a bad thing, because if you're gonna fly this on a drone, you don't want the Wi-Fi on, because that could cause a uh, flyaway or a crash, because it could interfere with the transmitter. So I don't typically use the Wi-Fi. Once you got it turned on, and then you're gonna go into your phone, and you're gonna go to your, uh, to your setting screen, and you go to your Wi-Fi, and there's the 8S, and it's saved in my phone. And I don't have to enter the password again since I already did, but I said the camera shows you what it is. And now it says it's connected. So at that point, uh, since it's connected to the action cam, then you're going to go to the uh, Firefly Cam app here. And you're going to press connect. And there's the feed. There's a preview. It's got, every, you know, it's got some of your, bait, your, your most used settings here. So you can, if you had this connected by Wi-Fi, you're going to be able to get into stuff like the ISO and EV value without getting into the menu. So this is one way you can get to it more easily. Um, it just isn't real practical if you have this on a drone or if it's, you know, um, or if you're flying a drone like me and it's on my head, I don't want to have the Wi-Fi on because I don't want it to interfere with my drones while I'm flying it. But for using it on a bicycle or any other action cam uses that's not RC related, and you're set to go. Now, it does have a lot more than just that. It's got uh, your long exposure, all the different photo, the different kind of settings on here. But up here at the top, it's got this little gear. And uh, you click that, and you've got every setting that's in the, in the, in the uh, just about every setting, I believe. It could be all of them that's in the camera. So this app is fully functional. You don't have to worry about uh, just a simplified app, kind of like the Yee Cam. Well, the Yee Cam, you have to use the app for everything, but it had very few settings. This has everyone in it, and it's not just like the Hawkeye 7S app, which was basically just like a preview of uh, like you're seeing now. This has every setting. So you have the camera or you have the app to make setting changes. So they, this does make it more simple for people to, to do this changing the settings on the go. Or if you've got somebody else that is uh, holding the phone and they can do the changes for you while you got it on. I mean, it's just, this is really cool. They've done a really good job on that. So let's go ahead and back out of that. So anyway, I think that covers pretty much everything. This is a long review. I apologize, but it's because there's so much to cover on this thing that I want to make sure that I don't forget anything because I'm really impressed by this camera. So we're going to go ahead and move along to some sample footage of this. Uh, that'll be at um, 1080p at 60 frames per second so it matches this video. But check that video description because that is where the links to the raw footage is for the 4K and any other ones I haven't decided yet to put in there. So you can see what it looks like and how it truly shines. And uh, we'll also do some audio um, with my mic. So you can hear as it with the, the mic that's built in, which is pretty good. It's a 7S, it's a great mic. And the, the uh, microphone you use an external one because i picked it up for like 11 bucks on amazon so you can use an external one and i'll be using that a lot now that will reduce the wind noise and you have a lot louder and clearer audio than even the good built-in mics that the, the, the uh, fireflies use so we'll go along and move along to some sample footage now okay so we're testing the firefly 8s this is at 2.5k at 60 frames per second but for the sake of the review, since my camcorder is only 1080p capable at 60 frames per second, this will be downsampled to 1080 since I can't, uh, you know, I don't want to go to the trouble of upscaling the camcorder footage. So 
So I had that overlaid on the video just so people know. So this is still should look better than the uh, 1080p footage would. Even down sample, you should get better uh, colors. It should look better. Now this is using the built-in internal mic right now. In a moment here, I will uh, plug in the external mic here in just a moment. And we'll see what kind of difference we notice between the built-in and the external mic. So I want to get some pictures of some of these flowers so we can get an idea on the colors and such. This is the EV set at zero. It's a little bit hazy right now. So I've got the EV just at zero. Okay, so I'm just going to stop here and I'm gonna plug in the mic. Okay, so the mic is plugged in now. I got it attached to my shirt. I believe you can plug it in while it's recording and it will switch between the two. I just did it just be safe um, so that we did definitely get the audio from the microphone and uh, just wanted to be safe on that. Getting some pictures of some of these flowers and stuff we got around our backyard so we can get an idea on the colors. This audio should sound clear. There's a bit of a breeze here so there might have been a little wind noise in the mic earlier but it should be less now on this. Try to get an idea here this pool water, see how that looks in the video footage. But overall, I think that this is a really nice camera. For the price, you're gonna be competing with some of the higher end GoPros at, you know, at least half, if not a third of the cost, depending on which version you'd be comparing it to. But I really like from what I've heard how well the audio sounds in this external mic. And like I said the mic is only $11. So it's inexpensive and you can get much better audio. If you're doing things like I'm doing with reviews, get some pictures of the clouds up here, see how well this works. As I just got the EV set at zero. When it's really sunny here, it probably would go down just one notch negative would probably be a little bit better. But it's kind of going between clouds and sunshine. There is no gyro stabilization available at 2.5K, so I think it's only available when you go down to 1080. At least I believe it was grayed out when I was going through the menu. Okay, I think that should be good enough to get an idea of you know, the footage and the difference between the built-in mic and the external mic. So thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for more reviews and uh, be sure to subscribe if you're not, not a subscriber and have a good day. The power of the dark side, 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 side.